I'll be showing six new features in Microsoft Forms. This includes the return of embedded interactive forms in Stream, practice mode, present live improvements, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is the return of the beloved integration between Forms and Microsoft Stream for interactivity. I have a Stream video here that I'm going to open up. I've opened up a Stream video that I've uploaded here, and this is the new Stream on SharePoint. Over on the right, I'm gonna choose video settings and first make sure this new interactivity switch is on. If it's off, you won't see interactivity here. Make sure it's on, the little interactivity button shows up. Now I'm gonna click on interactivity. And what's nice is I can add two different types. Historically, you've had an add form and that went away temporarily, it's back now. You can also add a call out. Now first we're gonna add a form. So I wanna make sure that a specific form with questions pops up when a point in my video has passed. So I'm gonna click add form and I'm gonna paste in a form link that I've already had right here. And I know this is gonna start at one minute and 58 seconds into the video. And I will hit the check to save it. This is what it's gonna look like in the form. I'm just gonna click continue to video and I'm gonna show how this actually shows up. In this part of the video here, I'm talking about Microsoft's AI principles for responsible AI. Let's hit play and see what happens. How we work with schools and students and just AI in general. So I finished up and automatically this little form pops up. And what are the responsible AI principles? I wanna make sure people are paying attention. I click start now and I get a question here, which of the following are Microsoft responsible AI principles? So I'm gonna click the ones that I'm pretty sure of and hit submit. And now that form is completed and in the lower right, I can click continue to video. The other thing you'll note is that there's this little icon right here. I can always see that there's a form coming up. The other thing that's new is that I can add a call out. So I will click add call out here and that's gonna have a little pop up call out in a specific part of your video. You can change the color of the call out. Let's say I choose purple here. I'll add in my text. Pay attention to what Mike is saying here. You can make this call out bigger or more narrow if you wanna have it like a square, for example, and you can drag it anywhere you want. So I'm gonna drag it right above my head here in the video. Let's say I want that call out to start at two minutes and 10 seconds, and I want it to end at two minutes and 20 seconds. And then just hit the check mark to save. If you hover here, you'll also see now there's a little call out icon. You can see exactly where that pops up. So we'll scroll back a couple seconds and then watch the call out pop up. And then hit play which I'll also talk about and show briefly. There's some core experiences that are- And there we go, the callouts popped up. And that will stay up for 10 seconds. Now you can add as many callouts and forms as you want to your stream videos. So your interactivity is back with Stream on SharePoint. The second new feature is practice mode for quizzes. I've got a quiz right here and I'm gonna turn on practice mode. Hit the three dot menu and choose settings. Now here's practice mode, I can turn this on but also I wanna try a demo as an educator in this case to see what it looks like. So try a demo. First, we're gonna answer the correct question right here. So it says, what animal leaps out of the water to communicate with others of its kind? Click whale and I'll click submit. Woohoo, that's excellent. We'll go to the next question. Now it says submit an incorrect answer. Which of these land animals moves the most slowly? And turtle might sound good, I'll hit submit Oh, that one wasn't right. Now I could skip it. I could show the correct answer or I could try it again. So maybe I'll choose snail and choose submit. All right, that one was correct. Hit next. And the last one, which bamboo eating bear has a baby that weighs less than an apple? I'll hit polar bear, hit submit. Oh, that one wasn't right. Show the correct answer, panda bear. So you can create quizzes that let students practice when they get things wrong. It's a great new mode to try out as an educator. The third new feature is automatically syncing your form results in Excel without having to refresh your data. This has been a long request. I have a form here and there's only two responses so far. Now this feature is currently for Microsoft 365 Insiders. It's not fully globally rolled out, but it's coming soon. It says sync results to Excel for the web automatically and analyze with more detail and flexibility. So I will click open results in Excel. Here we go, it's gonna get ready to enjoy my data in Excel. Here are the two survey results that have been filled out so far. And note that Excel says syncing. This workbook syncs automatically with changes in forms, and this is in preview. So let's just see if another result pops in. Look at that, a new result just appeared. I didn't have to update anything or sync it, so what's really handy is you can have these results up, and as the new results are coming in, it'll automatically keep this Excel file auto in sync. 
The fourth new feature is improvements to Present Live with Forms. Present Live allows you to capture data in real time and you can see how the charts update with people's responses. So I've got my favorite food survey here and let's say I want to present live. If I click this, I've got a bunch of responses that have been submitted as I was presenting this live. You also have the QR code that people could scan. One of the new updates is I can go here and make that QR code go away. If I want to bring it back, I click here. Similarly, if I want to go full screen right here, I click that and it goes full screen and I make the QR code go away. Now I've got double full screen and we'll have this go back and the QR code come back. Lastly, there's a new option right here for tree map. And if I click here, it shows a different breakdown of the different food choices. If I go to the next screen, I can have my word cloud and see what are people voting on. And so this will update in real time as you're doing it. If I want to do all responses, I can see everything right there in a list. The fifth new feature is that the Forms app is now available in the Windows Store. I'll open up the Start menu and type Store and launch the Microsoft Store. And we'll maximize this. At the top, I'm going to search for Forms and there's Microsoft Forms app. There we go. Now click Get and it will install this. Okay, the Forms app has been installed. And just a note, this will not run offline, so you'll still need to be online, but a lot of your same Forms features are right here. Now they're just in a native Windows app. So I will click Open. And I can pin this to the taskbar or pin it to the Start menu, create a desktop shortcut, even auto login when I start my device. And I'm not gonna allow these, but you could do that. And what you see here is just a wrapped up Windows app. It looks very similar to what you've seen on the website, but now it is just a Windows app. The sixth new feature is that you can now migrate all Google Forms to Microsoft Forms through the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Right here is a nice little architectural diagram explaining if you have Google Drives through the Admin Center, you can migrate all of your forms to Microsoft Forms. And also, you've already been able to migrate your Google Drive to Microsoft OneDrive. You can migrate your Google Docs to Word, Excel, PowerPoint. You can even migrate all your Gmail into Outlook. So Forms was one of those last components. So in terms of getting ready, here are some nice gifts where you can get all your Google Forms ready. So making sure that the migration is all ready. Down in the Microsoft Admin Center, you're going to see that there's a new dropdown for Forms. And you'll be able to migrate these. And as well, once you have this over here, you can even do CSV files and pull those over. And you can then go back to the Microsoft Forms website once everything is migrated and make sure everything is there. I'm not doing the full demo today, but there's a link in the description that goes into much more detail. We have a Microsoft Learn article and a docs.com article that goes even into more details. But I just wanted to make sure folks are aware you can do a bulk migration of Google Forms into Microsoft Forms, and that's built into the Microsoft 365 Admin Center as of now. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.